Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work, community service, volunteering, and spreading positivity. We're all about the positivity here on the show. And with me today, I've got a very special guest. He has over 40 plus years of experience in professional wrestling. I'm talking about a referee, a trainer, an author, a booker, and he's done so much. He's been inducted to several Hall of Fames uh, and was one of the stars of the movie The Iron Claw that just recently came out. I'm pleased to welcome the one and only James Beard. James, welcome to Wrestling With Heart. Good to, good to be with you, Stan. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So tell me about your childhood. Where are you from? Well, I'm I'm a Texas boy. I was born and raised in East Texas around the Tyler area. Um, that's that's pretty much where I grew up. I went to went to school all the way through here, and then then of course when I graduated, went to ended up at uh, in Fort Worth one year, and then I went up in North North Texas, so North Texas State, uh, many moons ago. But uh, so I've been I've been a Texas boy most of my life. I've lived in Tennessee for a little while. Of course, I was over overseas a good bit, but but um, I'm I'm a, I'm a Texan. I'm back home. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's you know they say everything's bigger and better in Texas. I mean, it's a huge state. Well, that's that's true. It is. <laughs> well, you know, Texas is such a a hotbed of wrestling. You know, as well as other parts of the South. But you know, one of the common themes of our our conversation today is talking about Texas wrestling specifically the Dallas area uh, where the Von Erichs grew up and they're from. And I know you were in the Iron Claw, which was mm -hmm. such a, a, it was a, a colossal success, a huge success in the box office it was one of the biggest movies that movies that came out uh, in 2023. And uh, you know, what, what got you interested in professional wrestling? I guess we'll start with that. Oh gosh, uh, I started watching wrestling when I was just a kid. You know, just just, just a little bitty boy. Um, we we were about ninety miles east of Dallas, and and um, we didn't we didn't have cable. We had a had an antenna, and and um, you know sometimes you could pick up the Dallas stations pretty well, and sometimes it wasn't wasn't so great. But but on Saturdays, if if if, if we could get it, we we watched uh, watch wrestling out of. Back then, it was out of the Northside Coliseum, and, and also they had a studio program in Dallas. And, and uh, then later on, of course, they started doing the, the uh, taping at the, at the Sportatorium, too. So, and Will Rogers. And so, but I, I watched from the time I was just a kid on old black and white television. And then and my folks took me to the Sportatorium a couple of times when I was, I don't know, eight or nine years old, something like that. And and that was the first time I ever saw it live. And, uh, uh, you know, that changed everything for me. The, the seeing, it in, seeing it in color and, and live and it just a whole, I tell people all the time, if, if, you, if you're not a wrestling fan, if you ever, ever go to a live show, it'll change the way you perceive it for sure. And, you know, it obviously did that with me. And, and uh, that was just something that kind of stuck with me for the rest of my life. You know, I was, I was a fan and then and, and I kind of got, pushed into the business and once I got into it, it it's it's become my life really then I've been playing music for several years so I was a little bit older when I got into it and and uh and, and I, I I was an athlete I played I played uh basketball and baseball in college and then it wasn't you know that the athletic part of it I think I could probably handle it okay I, I just it was just one of those things that, that it was a little too late for me to try to start something at that point. At least that's how I felt about it. And 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 really, when I got into it, my goal was to get on and, and involved in the, uh, in the in the business side, the creative side, and and uh, and that's something that I worked for, worked toward from the from the time I got into business. So I I wasn't really trying to be a wrestling star. I didn't have that. I didn't have that. Um, um, goal in mind, but I just wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted to be someone who could, could, could use, use this, you know, and yeah. that, and that's fortunately I, I've had those opportunities. That's been, been good to me. 
Do you remember the first time you started writing for a particular wrestling company? Uh, well, in those days, you didn't write. You, you did what we call booking. <laughs> and, and a lot of times that wasn't even written down. It was just all here, you know. You might write, make notes and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, we, we booking, booking and writing are two different things to me. And the writing has really kind of taken away some, some of the spontaneity, I think, and some of the creativity that, 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 um, that made wrestling so appealing to me uh, because it, 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 there's, there are certain things that, that the writers do these days that, that uh, don't make a lot of sense wrestling wise or competitive wise. It's, it's, it's more, more trying to, I don't know. It is more like a, a variety show than it is a wrestling wrestling show now. So there was, there's a big difference. I, I do remember when I first was able, was able to contribute to uh, developing matches and then coming up with finishes and that kind of thing. And, and, and uh, that was, that really started in Japan for me. But uh, and and that was that was something I wanted to do and something I've always enjoyed doing and still do to this day. What were some of your favorite matches or what have been since you still are doing it? What have been some of your favorite matches to my, referee? my favorite matches are always the ones that are technically nice, technically well developed, you know, and and the, and the psychology means something. It does, it's not always the main events, not always the the high dollar matches. I you know I, I was very fortunate that. Or pretty early on, I was able to kind of determine which matches I wanted to work, which and, and the ones that I didn't want to work. But and a lot of times they wanted me to be in the main events anyway. But but uh, anytime I got to work with the technicians, that's that, those were the those were the times when I enjoyed it the most. And and you know sometimes it was it wasn't always the the feature matches. It was you know, but I, I I've been in so many thousands and thousands, and some of them are just are very memorable. Some of them. You know, when, when people ask me those questions, it's hard to say, oh, this match was my favorite or that one. There were some in Japan that were just uh, in incredible that I enjoyed. Um, and, and then there's some over here that, that uh, you know, uh, working with working with the great workers, the guys that really understood how to develop matches, that, that, that's, that was my joy. Yeah, I mean, you've been a part of several iconic matches over the years, uh, working with so many, so many legends. And I got to see the, the the Iron Claw that you were a part of, and that that had to have been a fun experience. The, the Incredible, story, yeah. Incredible. The story that they were telling with the Von Erichs, um, man, it was just so so tragic, but also uplifting when you see um, Kevin Von Erich really kind of come into his own and be with with his family and proud of the legacy that he built help build and yeah, and that's that's the thing i try to tell people that not they, so many wrestling fans you know even before the movie was out the the rumors were out there about this and that and and and, and they then the, the cast was announced and all of that people started criticizing this and criticizing that i, I try to tell people listen this is a movie it's not a documentary it's it's a movie based on on fact and, and on true stories but it's still a movie and, and it's you know two and two hours and so many minutes long you know and you, you're not going to be able to get every detail in in that and develop every character and, and that that was in, involved in world class and, and the von Erich family and in two a little over two hours it's just not going to happen it's impossible and yeah it's impossible to do that and and, and the truth is, is this story in particular it's about Kevin and, and it's a business which is unique in, in itself just because of what it is. Uh, and, and, you know, and a father who was a dominant person in that business and very well known, one of the, one of the biggest draws in the business over, over, over a couple of decades. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's about Kevin's story about coming into it and dealing with that and, and, and also dealing with, with the fact that he, he's the older brother left you know, and, 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 uh, David, you know, really was the first one to get the big break. They, they were pushing him to be a world champion. And when David died, uh, it, it, it kind of skipped over Kevin again, went to carry. And, and so he was dealing with that as well, you know, but because, you know, you would think the older brother is going to be the guy that's going to be the next in line, but that's not how it worked. 
and 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 I'm sure there were a lot of well, I know there were a lot of a lot of uh, psychological things going going on there with Kevin, you know, that, that that dealing with that that situation, and he dealt with it well. But it's, that's what the movie's about. That, and then then of course all the tragedies, you know, and 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 dealing with all of that, and and, and also dealing with developing a relationship with Pam, you know, and, which and and building a family, which none of that stuff was fully develop because it, it couldn't be it just it, there's not enough time um, and a lot of things were changed i mean there, there's some timelines in the movie that aren't the way it happened and, and a couple of things that that the movie showed happening didn't happen exactly that way uh and and uh you know it, it, but it, it was done that way in order to be able to tell kevin's story and that's what it's about you know and, and i try to tell people if you will go to see the movie go to see it from that point of view and then don't try to don't try to nitpick it for not being a documentary did you feel like the movie stayed true to the von eric story it it did it, it did in a lot of respects it did it did in the fact that that i know how close all those brothers were and and they really loved each other and that family is close and 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 that i think that that was the the big point uh, you know kevin Kevin told Sean Durkin that at some point after after Sean had already written the script and then work started working on it and that kind of thing, he did talk to Kevin and 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 Kevin told him, you know, I, the main thing I want to see is is that that the relationship with my brothers is the real thing, and and I think Sean made a a real effort of of trying to show that 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 those guys those guys really loved each other and and they, and they did that that's exactly how they were and. And they were close knit family. All of them were, you know. And it kind of fell apart, of course, with all the tragedies. And and then and then later, uh, uh, Doris leaving, you know, Fritz and Fritz and Doris getting a divorce and that kind of thing. That that's another tragedy, you know, that really didn't didn't show up in the movie, you know. But but it's it's part of the family story, you know. Uh, but yeah, that, I think I think that was that was very true to to real life. Um, there were other people involved in the family. I mean, Ke you know, Kevin had two girls before he had those two boys. You know, they, they weren't even in, in the movie, which they understand why. They, they were told why, and they understand that that is one of those things they couldn't, they had the story had to be told this way. Um, David David was married at one time and had a child, and, and that child passed away like two or three months old. That wasn't in there either. You know, and, and 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 it would have been that time. You're talking about running down a bunch of rat holes there that you just you can't get into one in a two hour movie. Uh, Carrie had two girls, you know, and knew them both well, and still do. And, and and that wasn't part of the story. But that's just you know that's what you have to do when you make a movie. And and but the, but the family the family dynamic I think was very very honest in there in the in the movie and I think it, it told that story that you know they were close they loved each other the struggles in the business trying to to, to come into it as a young guy and, and taking your lumps and, and learning learning you know like the the match with Harley you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. that was that was very very realistic you know a lot of a lot of experienced guys that were that were around during those days uh they would take advantage of young guys like that and you know especially guys they knew were going to be kind of uh pushed pushed along pretty soon you know uh, but at the same time uh, a lot of those guys loved working with the binary boys because they knew that's where the money was going to be so you know there, there was a there were a lot of things in, in the, the wrestling side of the story that was very real too and we tried to make the wrestling scenes as realistic as possible and i think we did i think we nailed it on that chavo guerrero was incredible in putting those oh, together for sure and, uh, and 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 we you know he, he allowed me to help you know as far as telling these guys that, that this guy would do this this way and this guy would do this that way but you know the guys that i'd worked with in the ring i knew them, you know and then mm -hmm. and, and uh and and i think we got it right on the wrestling part you know, so yeah, the movie the movie had a lot of accuracy in that re regard. Uh, as long as you don't try to make it historically perfect, then I think I think that uh, I think they I think he nailed all the main things anyway. And the cast seemed like they were having fun too. They really got into it. 
they were all incredible to work with. Uh, and and I, I didn't get to work with all the cast because uh, uh, the, a lot of the family scenes and stuff like with, with, with Kevin and Pam and, and with Doris and that kind of thing, we weren't involved in. We were involved in the things that had to do with wrestling, but all those guys that, that were involved in that were just incredible to work with. And, and none of them had that star attitude at all. They were all very willing to listen and, and, uh, and, and do what we, you know, what we had asked them to do, or at least showed them how to do and that kind of thing. And, and they did all the wrestling scenes. I mean, that they, we had guys that were showing them how to do these things. And of course, Chaba would work with them for several months before and taught, taught them some basic things, but, uh, when it came down to shooting the actual actual scenes you see in the movie, those are the actors doing them, and 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 they they did them all the way through. It, it, it was it was a uh, pretty impressive actually to see how well they did it. Yeah, Chavo did an incredible job teaching yes, he did. guys how yeah. to how to how to wrestle. So yeah, had a ball working with Chavo because I've known his his family forever, and I had worked with Chavo Junior two or three times before that in the past too. Another situation, it's not not movie wise and just wrestling, but, um, we had a, we had a really good relationship, good, good, good time working there with he, he and hero Coda, who was the, the stunt director and, and a very well-known one in, in, in Hollywood, uh, uh, won several awards, but uh, he, he, with the three of us were, we, we got pretty tight during the movie and, and enjoyed it. We had our own little after party after it was all over with, and, yeah. and kind of, you know, it was, it was kind of, it was just a good experience. It really was. Yeah, it seems like it was too. I, I I hope they this leads to more wrestling biopics being made because there's a lot of stories out there that I feel like deserve to be told. I've heard rumors that there's already been a couple of them greenlighted, and I, I I'm not surprised. You know, when they when they saw how successful this one was, uh, I think I think that's you know it's kind of like monkey see monkey do in the entertainment business, and that's yeah. that's what usually happens. And you know, uh, hopefully some of them will be just as good and, and just as 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 uh, well done as this movie was. Yeah, let's let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, well, let's switch gears now and talk about some of the stuff you've done outside of the ring. I know you've been involved with a lot of charity organizations, done a lot of charity work, and helped out in your community. Tell me about some of the uh, organizations that you've partnered up with over the years. Well, I don't necessarily get involved with organizations so much. I just like to try to help, you know, I did some of it's through church. Uh, some of it's uh, just, you know, just like in, with schools and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the group I work with in Texas right now, Texas Style Wrestling, they're very involved in the, in the community and, and helping kids and then the, the, the school, some are underprivileged and, and some of them are and this, in fact, we just, we just moved into a new venue this last night. That was our first taping in this new venue, which is incredible. It's a, it's, it's uh, tied to the school system there uh, where they have the kids come and, and uh, uh, they work in these stores. The building is almost like a mall and they have, they have the businesses in there and have these two or, two arenas, one of them holds about 8,000, one holds about 600. And <clears throat> that's where we taped last night. And and uh, the, the, we will have students following us around uh, learning production and learning uh, camera work and learning uh, how to write, you know, for, for TV, uh, the, the formats and that kind of, all those things that it's kind of, it's a learning center. And, and we're, we're involved in that, which is something that's real exciting. Uh, at home, I, 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 I try to, I, I've got some, uh, I don't know how to, they're underprivileged kids in, in, in one part of town and, and we do some things with them that, that uh, you know, a lot of them don't have, a, a, have parents that they're living with or maybe you're living with one and, mm-hmm. and, and pretty, pretty poor neighborhoods and that kind of thing. And, and, and we have we have a program that we're, we're working with them and we, we go to those schools and it's uh, it's an incredible experience to see those kids faces light up, you know, and, and get all those hugs and things from them. But some of them have never had Christmas presents until we started doing this, Aww. you know, that, they that, 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 you know, told us, I said, I've never had a Christmas present before. And, and, you know, we bring them things for every holiday. We do something with them. And um, it's, it's just, you know, doing things like that, to, for, for me is it, it mean it, it it means more to me than it does to them probably you know it's just uh, it's just 
it's heartwarming to see uh, uh, that little bit of time, you know, that they're, they're happy, you know, and, 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 and feel like they're special and loved. And then, so those, those are the kinds of things I try to do. I don't, I don't necessarily get involved in any particular organization doing something. That's just, that's kind of, you know, yeah. I mean, I kind mean, of one of those things. Yeah. It seems like that um, working with, uh, being involved with schools, uh, you just, you just never know what somebody's going through and the environment that these people are going through. And it's good to give something to them that they could use and something that they can enjoy. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a real, it's a real concern to me that, that uh, we have gotten to a point to where I think family is, is uh, kind of taking a, a back seat, uh, you know, to, the, you know the kid the kids aren't brought up with, with with two parents a lot of times and sometimes they're not brought up with parents at all and and uh and and then i think there's a lot of things that have kind of gotten out of hand as far as the, the education system is concerned and 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 then the teaching is not always getting through the basics and that kind of thing so there, there's so many things with our youth that that really concern me right now and I, and I think that that's something if we can concentrate on in some way and try to help in some way whether it's you know whether it's teaching or whether it's just making them feel good for a little while it, it, you know something to to, to you know to, to kind of change the pattern you know and, and I think that's something that we've got to really strive to do right now in our, our society. Yeah, um, it's definitely it's definitely something that we should probably uh, look at to improve because I think children are the future. They really are, and we need to have future leaders really um, make a difference as far as our our education system and as far as working in in schools and and, and teaching the next generation. Yeah, well, that 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 all comes from leadership. It's just. It's it's like every other thing, like a wrestling business. It all you know how the the quality of what's there is is usually comes from leadership, and 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 I just don't think that we've had the the kind of leadership we need to to sustain that. I worry about the future of, the, of those kids, and my my grandkids, you know, and you know that's something important that I think that that we all need to try to think about and contribute to. Yeah. Uh, wh- why do you feel passionate about helping out in your community? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just, I just think that's what you do if you're a human being and care about society, you know, I mean, it, it, we, we're so divided in so many ways right now. And I, and I think that's a shame. I mean, we can disagree about things when you have different philosophy about uh, government or religion or what, anything else, but there are certain basic things that I think all of us should be agreeing on, you know, the, the, just, just the basic decency of life and, and, and I think we get away from that sometimes because we get so divided with other things. And, 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 and that's something that really concerns me because, because like I said, I've got grandkids, not, you know, I, I want them to have a better, better place to live, you know, when they grow up, I don't want them to have to see the world destroyed, you know, from idiocy. You know? And, and, and I, I really, I really am concerned about that. Yeah. I just hope I'm with you. I hope that we can change things uh, in the coming years to uh, make a better future, make a better life, so that we'll have a better way of doing things, a newer, a new way of doing things. Well, we better, we better. We're, uh, this this place is going to be a mess. Yeah, that's something I definitely think we can both agree upon. But James, this has been wonderful getting the chance to speak with you. It means a lot to me and my listeners and viewers that are watching this on YouTube. Where can people find more about you on uh, social media? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a big social media guy. I do have a Twitter account and uh, 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 all that stuff, but I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I do, I check with guys on Facebook, you know, and and, and uh, that's how I keep up with some people. But I don't uh, mostly just if I post something, it's usually about something I'm involved in doing and promoting it, or or you know, once in a while I'll I'll post something personal, but not, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not a big poster on social media but you can find me and if, if you somebody wants me or, or or is looking for to contact me in some way uh, i'm always checking in on it and i'm not that hard to catch you know so that, that that's that's pretty easy i'm uh working on i'm just about finished with a second book right now i'm trying to get it done so by the summer it's out 
And All right. So I'll be I'll be probably promoting that a little bit, but um, you know I'm 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 not hard to find. Uh, I don't like you. you you're not going to see a lot of me unless you look for me. But but um, I'm not hard to find. We'll definitely have you back on here uh, to to promote your your book. I think that's pretty exciting. Looking forward to uh, reading it. Be happy to. You bet. All right. Thank you again for coming on, and you're more than welcome to come back. Absolutely. Thank you, Stanley. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.